First off, I'm not a rapist. I haven't murdered anybody. The, the offence that I'm convicted for is quite an innocuous thing in some respects. I'm, I'm convicted, I hold a conviction, probably I think the only person in the country, of assaulting a designated court security officer, okay? So that's the first thing. Michael, could you put those slides up for me just, just for a second? The, on, oh, on your email, on the email, the PDF thing, and I'll whiz through them really quickly. Today is the London Marathon. Okay, Marathon, just a little bit about me. I'm an aircraft engineer. Michael is an engineer too. I think engineers are good people in society. If we look at things in a, in a system context, we are uh, talking today about not the CCRC in particular, but whole criminal justice system. And I look at the whole thing as a whole system, yeah? It follows all the way through from police investigations through to the Crown Prosecution Service, the courts, the CCRC at the other end, the Court of Appeal, there's a whole system, yeah? And in some cases, they just get it wrong. In some cases, it's malicious. I'm gonna to say today, and I think I've been saying for quite some time, in my case, it's malicious, yeah? Uh, so, yeah, just, just, just sort of open it up. On, as big as possible, it. as big as possible. Okay, I mean, go to the first, first page. So at Marathon today, London Marathon, sometimes I, call, I coined the phrase justice now because justice delayed is justice denied. This system in this country loves to kick things into the long grass. The Birmingham Six, the Guildford Four, Stephen Lawrence's, the 30th anniversary today of his murder. Another massively long injustice, yeah? Uh, our society is littered with them. So let's go, I mean, I've just put up some things. 2008, 2009, I started having some, I'm an ex-aircraft engineer for British Airways. I studied law to go on to be an aircraft crash assessor. Thankfully, I'd already studied law by the time all this stuff started happening to me. When it did happen to me, and what drives me forward in all of this, is if they're doing this to me, and I'm quite capable individual, they're doing it to a lot of other disadvantaged people who can't actually deal with what's, what's going on. And that's what drives me forward in what I do. So 10 years ago, I came into metropolitan police corruption, okay? Nowadays, I mean, if you go back to the other screen with the big old um, iceberg, Daniel Morgan, a murdered uh, to, uh, private investigator, I know Alistair very well, I made five documentaries about corruption in various guises in this country. Um, strip search of children, David Carrick, um, the Wayne Cousins, Hillsborough, all of these things. They all involve like police corruption, failures in the criminal justice system, it covering, it's covering things up. One of the things I set out to do is show people that this is what's going on. I think to some extent I've been successful, along with other people, that we're able to, to impart upon the general public, because we need them on side, that there's a real problem in the system. Metropolitan Police is in special measures. They're completely and thoroughly disgraced and they have uh, less than 40% less than of Londoners actually trust the Metropolitan Police anymore. Okay, what happened to me, I'm a single father as well, I was bringing up my daughter, Hannah, and um, the events that changed my life. I unfortunately found out my daughter was being groomed, reported to the Metropolitan Police. Uh, quite surprised when they did nothing. Called the police up, hey guys, you know, what's going on? Why aren't you picking the laptop up? Uh, my partner there will obviously be testing me to this. And one of the things I will say is everything I'm saying is evidentially backed. The, what happened is quite extraordinary. You can read about it online. Uh, the Metropolitan Police conducted a dawn raid on my house, half past six in the morning, battering rams, dragged me naked from my house on an allegation that I had harassed a member of the Metropolitan Police. Unfortunately for the Metropolitan Police, the calls, the few calls I had were recorded with them. Yeah, shows that what they actually said was totally and utterly uh, false. Okay, there's an article online called Justice is Impossible if you cannot trust the police to tell the truth by a very well-known uh, journalist called George Monbiot, who took a look at everything impartially and wrote that article. Um, empowering the innocent. Okay, Michael Norton, we've come into contact, uh, not in quite recent, really recent history, due to the CCRC have brought us together, which is, which is, a, which is yeah, thank you very much. Um, private criminal prosecution. What happened to, to I, I was put through a prosecution. I won't go into the, the, the details of it, so I'm found not guilty at trial and I go off and uh, go through the system. I put all of the evidence into the IPCC, the much discredited IPCC. I was part and parcel of doing that too, bringing them down. The IPCC described everything as just a mistake. The police officers just made a mistake unlawfully entering my house with battering rams with my young child and uh, wife in the house. The statements was just all a mistake, all of that, and it was all discounted. I took the very same, I mean, 
at the time, back in 2011, there wasn't many individuals doing private criminal prosecutions. And I think it's described as uh, the sort of first in history. Anyway, as an individual, I took all the same evidence. I prepared flattery is the best form of, uh, what, or what is it? Uh, imitation. Imitation is the best form of flattery. I just copied the CPS, prepared the case files, put it into the, into the, into the courts. Did a private criminal prosecution of the secretary of the Metropolitan Police, who I also see as, in some extent, a victim in all of this. Um, the misogyny in the Metropolitan Police is all very good for the police officers to put up the little secretary as the individual who's the victim, yeah? Um, she's obviously been put through an awful lot too. But anyway, it was a private criminal prosecution for perverting the course of justice. So the very same evidence goes before the court. Judge David Farrell, um, uh, the Crown Court judge in Luton Crown Court, called the evidence compelling. I'll come back to that in a second. Mafia-like conduct. We are really talking about, they call them the biggest gang in London, the Metropolitan Police. There is no question about it. They behave like a mafia organisation. My, most of my family are in teaching, head teachers, etc. in London. My sister-in-law in London, about two days before a pivotal hearing where the Metropolitan Police tactically made a big mistake by making a dismissal application to try and throw the case out. Two days before that, my sister-in-law, head teacher in London, was approached by two guys in a suit in a London park with a letter that they just handed to her and then walked off. In that letter, it was threatening uh, my family, members of my family, that if I didn't, if she didn't persuade me to stop this prosecution, okay? Um, as you imagine, that is a, a big attempt to uh, pervert the course of justice, real quite serious stuff. If you try to nobble a trial by going up to the CPS dude and saying, hey, you better throw the case, you're going to jail for a long time. You'd expect there'd be a big, massive investigation into that. Of course, Metropolitan Police didn't bother doing that. Um, court clerk, let's put this out there. The court clerk, my case, when the, the, the obviously they, discovered that there was tapes, yeah? At some point along the investigation, I was arrested, dragged off down to the police station. Um, my phone sent for forensics, came back, saying there was, the forensics said it was blank phone. Later on, about another three weeks, four weeks later, the phone goes back to forensics. That's because they now found out there wasn't a blank phone, and they sent it back for a second search. On this occasion, they obviously now know that there is recordings, and they are in shit, because of the before, after the first forensic, two days afterwards, Murphy writes her statement. So I'm arrested on the 4th of September. There's no statement from anybody. I'm just arrested for member of, harassing a member of the Metropolitan Police. 15th of September, forensics comes back. 17th of September, she writes a statement that's entirely false. Phone goes back for a second invest, forensic investigation during a court case. What then happens when they now know they're in trouble, the court, actually, Magistrate Court, Ian Comfort, who is the chair of... Uh, of uh, not casting any dispersions, but he comes from Uxbridge Magistrates Court where this is all going on. He's a chair, chair okay, correct it, chair of magistrates? I was not correct, I was not chair of magistrates. At that time? I was not chair of Uxbridge Magistrates Court at that time or any time. And were you chair of magistrates then? Ealing Magistrates. Ealing Magistrates, okay. Your, your LinkedIn says something different, but that's fine. Okay, so he is chair of magistrates. But, what happens in the court is that they then appoint solicitors for me. You're not allowed to talk to, you're not allowed to cross-examine anybody. The, the witness goes behind witness protection screens and my case just mysteriously moves all the way across London, which I later find out to facilitate uh, an individual who was a court clerk called Jonathan Wetrich in Hendon Magistrates Court, who just so happens to be an ex-Metropolitan Police Officer. Coincidence. Um, go, go back up a little bit. Go, okay, no, no, go, go back. No, 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 yeah, squeeze, 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 squeeze down. Keep going down, 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 down. Okay, there's a lot of media, there's an awful lot of media on this. And I'm, I can tell you for one thing, it's really difficult to get hold of, get media interested in your case. They're not going to get interested in case unless there's evidence supporting it. There is tons of media on about this, yeah? As the IPCC and their, uh, IPC, CCRC and their investigations found out, they had a good look. They're worried, there hasn't been anything recently. Hmm. That, okay, I don't need to stand here and say I, I'm, I'm innocent, all of it. That's, that's a Crown Court judge, okay? So this is a Crown Court judge on the, in October 2000 and justice, yeah? I think everybody's entitled to justice. Um, Especially me, uh, especially Michaels, especially Michaels. Okay, look. So, that, that within this investigation, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I appreciate you probably can't talk, that's good. Okay, 
from what I have seen in three years, bear in mind this is all about predominantly the designation of an individual. About, I mean, it's like saying I assault with a police constable. Show me that that individual is a police constable. Yeah? I've assaulted this supposed designated court security officer. Show me he's a court security officer. They can't. They have no records of it. They have admitted that. And in all of that time, in that three years, it appears that they sent one email. This is them talking about what we might do. Maybe we should send an email to HMCTS. Right, let's go down. So this is the extent of their investigation into my case. Three years I'm waiting patiently, and they, and they ask three questions to, to Mighty, uh, to, to HMCTS, my apologies. Yeah, and it's just you can read them for yourself. That took three years. Well, actually, funny enough, it took, it took two years. They then rejected it. And I said, hey, guys, it doesn't even look like you've investigated this. And then they go back to the table, send one email. Yeah, that's the email. And they just ask the questions of HMCTS. They go down as the third one. Yeah. And this, this, this is probably the most important thing. So there's a freedom information request here which sets out, that's me, under a pseudonym, freedom information request, that about what is the actual process, yeah? And the actual process from, from HMC, there is, a, there is no designation status. An applicant only becomes designated once the submission is approved by Chief Executive of HMCTS on behalf of the Lord Chancellor and a letter issued. I mean, this is the 21st century, yeah? You would, you would, there would be a record of this, this thing. You're giving someone statutory powers to assault people, yeah? to search them, et cetera, et cetera. There would be a record of that. They have no record of it. And they're, they're talking, you know, uh, does this, and the question is, does this mean an applicant is not designated until a letter is issued? Put another way, if there is no letter, does this mean the, application, the applicant's not designated? The response from HMCTS is, following designation, a letter is issued by HMCTS to the security officer to confirm their designation. Where's that letter? Never produced, don't have it, we've lost it, whatever. There may be a short gap between designation and the issue of a letter. Pressing print, there's about a nanosecond, it comes out of the printer. I don't know, is that, what's that mean? Uh, but they are still designated. If an officer loses their letter, they're still designated. But if the officer loses his letter, surely this HMCTS have got a copy of their letter, a register, etc., etc. Now, what the, CC, what the CCRC decide on that? This is their analysis of that, yeah? Their analysis of that is, I think, this, I think the response from HMCTS is carefully worded. So they accept Sorry. that there's... Oh, hello, what's hey, happening? What this is... Yeah, that's from your office. This is the Do you want me to put it on? Police she's wearing a police helmet. <laughs> <laughs> she's a police officer. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. You, I mean, where's, yeah, just because you've got the hat on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good example, Michael. Go, go around and bash people on... The, Get a truncheon. You can do whatever you want. So I think, it's carefully, I think it's safe to conclude from the response of HMCCF that designation can be completed without a letter. That's not what was said. That was not what was said in their response, even though they're carefully worded response. It can be completed without a letter. But is, is Mr. Uh, has Mr. Carter ever produced a designation? No. Oh. Oh. Not even after the fact. Not even after the fact. They are not designated. No one was brought to court. Okay. So this is a philosophy. I've had to get into philosophy. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. What they're saying is, just because it doesn't exist doesn't mean that it didn't exist. Yeah? Now, if that is the case, if that even is the case, there's, there's doubt, yeah? There's doubt there, yeah? That benefit of the doubt is the word intransigent. Interestingly, the judge, in summing up in the same trial, referred to me as intransigent. It does rather seem that they, a bit of a coincidence, that they both use that very special word. Mm -hmm. Intransigence means that, irrespective of the facts, you will still continue on with what you're talking about. The, the post office horizon case trial. Right, okay, why this case is so important, okay? The general public, it's uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, it's just a reality of fact. You know, Joel here today, uh, Sean, you know, these, these cases, the, uh, you know, a conviction for rape, sexual assault, uh, paedophilia, all of those things are very, very emotive subjects and people will immediately switch off, defer that the court system has done the right job and those people are finished. 
pretty much because they they won't it'll be very difficult for them to garner public opinion i think that the court system the whole criminal justice system is on its knees in terms of public trust a case like mine is very simple it's court security uh, assault but the police officer was told by the judge to throw me out of the court building yeah and the judge so look if the judge is playing not playing the game yeah the prosecution is looking for a win it doesn't matter what you put before it. And as I said to the judge at the end of the thing, when, when he told me to stand up, that I'll stand up for any honorable man in the state sitting. And I didn't care what he did with his, with his uh, decision because it wouldn't matter if the God Almighty came down and pro proclaimed my innocence, you're gonna find me guilty. And that is the end of what I wanna say. But the CCRC, they've rejected uh, this, the sub submissions from me, okay? I've been to the, to, uh, off the JR with them, and it's completely without merit. I will be taking that to the Court of Appeal, yeah? Um, and we will go on from there. Of course. But there's other things that are happening in the background as well, CCRC, so I'd, I'd rather, it'd be better if they, you actually looked at things properly. I've just got a question, because it's quite routine, isn't it? The, yeah. I mean, you often hear about which, particular person. Which, okay, which is quite fundamental to the case because the CCRC were looking at the case in early days and they said, well, look, if he's not, if he's, if he's, if he's not guilty of assaulting a court security officer, we'll just, the, the Court of Appeal will just supplement a common assault charge. Well, that showed a fundamental misunderstanding of the case because the individual who has to be a court security officer before he can exercise powers to remove me from the court, yeah? So it goes right back to the root of the case. And arguably, the individual has lied, yeah? His statement, obviously unbeknown to all of them, the whole events were audio recorded. I've got the CCTV, I've got the audio. Anyone can look at it and see that those individuals lied in court, yeah? They lied about what happened and 